Okay, here we're going to do a very simple logo. You see the sketch is already up here in the file, in the background layer. And uh, really the objective is to practice some step and repeat and uh, just get used to working very precisely in Illustrator. So uh, first, a couple of maintenance things. First thing we're always going to do uh, is to go to the window me view menu and we're going to go down to hide bounding box. We definitely want to hide the bounding box. Uh, when the bounding box is active, I'll just show you here as an example when the there's a rectangle. With the rectangle now I can access these corner points which really is helpful for doing things like snapping precisely to the other corner of the next rectangle if I want to duplicate it. Whereas if the bounding box is turned on, show bounding box, then I can't access that because that'll always just resize it. So we like to work with the bounding box always turned off. Uh, you can always get it back by pressing E on your keyboard. That's this tool right here, the free transform tool. E, I like to call it the everything tool. Press E, it comes up, and then you can go back to whatever you're doing by simply pressing back to the other tool that you were on, for example, the move tool. So it's a good habit to get into. Just get used to working with the bounding box turned off, and you shouldn't have any problems. Okay, so we've turned the bounding box off right there now it says show bounding box so we know that's what we want we'll leave that the way it is uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're just going to reduce the opacity of this logo a little bit I've placed it onto the tracing layer down here now you can notice that the layer is locked so we're going to unlock it temporarily click on it and then what we're going to do is we're just going to reduce the opacity of that to do that we're going to access the window transparency over here and we'll just take the opacity of that element down 50 percent whatever works for you and we'll try ah, 30%. Pretty good. Okay, then we'll just lock that layer again. Just doing that, this is a reference. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's a sketch. Uh, it hasn't been drawn to any kind of geometrical accuracy. Uh, if we try to follow it too closely, we're going to get screwed up. So it's just there for a reference to let us know what it is that we're going to try to create. We can create something over top of it in roughly the same proportions. Okay, so we're going to start right now by clicking back on the main layer. We're calling that the refined layer to actually draw the logo. Obviously, we're going to be working with uh, circles here. That's going to be the ellipse tool. We'll bring up the ellipse tool by pressing L on your keyboard. There's the tool over there. L is the hot key for that tool. Now, whenever you're drawing ellipses, you know that if you start drawing an ellipse, you're going to draw it out from this invisible corner, which makes it actually very hard to position an ellipse. So with ellipses, we like to hold down the option key before we start to click with the tool. So I'm going to move. That allows me to draw to the center point. So if I move my mouse close to the center and then I hold down the option key or the alt key for you PC users, notice that when I start to draw, it draws out from the center. D using the center point, it's very easy to visualize where the center of circles are, where the invisible sort of corner of a circle is really hard to sort of visualize. So that's why we always use the option key in conjunction with the ellipse tool or with drawing circles. The other important modifier key, of course, is the shift key. We're going to be holding down the option and the shift key before we start to click, and that's going to ensure we draw a perfect circle. So we're going to pull out and draw a circle that's roughly the size of the shape that we're looking for. Okay, so let's just try that again. Option. We can start to draw. You can hold down the shift key at any point during this as long as you remember to let go of the mouse before you let go of the shift key. Then you can let go of option and shift. If you let go of the option and shift key beforehand as you're drawing, everything's looking really nice and hunky-dory, and then all of a sudden, whoa, the thing is moved. So make sure that you release the mouse after you've drawn the shape that you want. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're just going to quickly change the fill to black and the stroke to white. We've got our default colors here right now. As you can see, the fill is set to white. The stroke is set to black. What we want to do right now is we want to just switch that up a little bit. Um, so if you don't have that on your screen, you can just press D and that will reset your default colors. It's the same thing as pressing this button here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our... Uh, we're going to swap the fill and the stroke because we want our fill to be black. So we'll just press shift 
X on the keyboard. Shift X exchanges the colors that are in the fill and the strokes. You can just see now that my fill has gone to black and my stroke has gone to white. The next thing we want to do is we want to set the stroke to none. Now you can go and do that in the color palette, but there's a really quick way of doing that. We want to just use the slash key, which is the key just below the question mark on your keyboard, or it's equivalent to this tool right here that sets the se currently selected color swatch to none. Now the currently selected color swatch right now is our fill. We want to select the stroke. So another hotkey, press X on your keyboard. That's the equivalent of pressing this little button over here. Press X on your keyboard swaps which one's in front, which one's in back. Now that allows me to press the none key and that sets my foreground color to, sorry, that sets my stroke to none. So let's just review that really quickly. I'm going to press D to de set my default colors. And what we want to do here is press Shift X to exchange black and white. And then X brings the white stroke to the front and slash then sets that to none. So now we've got a circle that's filled with black. Okay, ready to move on to the next part. So now what we're going to do is we want to create the first arm. We're going to create the entire arm all the way up and then we're going to spin that sucker around to duplicate the, the remaining seven arms. So the easiest way to duplicate something in Illustrator is simply to use the move tool. You can press V on your keyboard to do that to grab the item and to hold down the option key as you drag it. So in Illustrator, here we go, we're going to move to the center. It's easier if we move to the center just to help us stay visually aligned. Hold down the option key, start to drag. Now, you can notice that because I have Smart Guides on, let's make sure Smart Guides are on actually. We're going to go into the View menu and we're going to make sure that Smart Guides are turned on. Control U, turn Smart Guides on. Smart Guides is the key to working precisely in Illustrator. Oh, just got rid of my window there. So it's really important to keep smart guides turned on whenever you're trying to work as precisely as possible. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to move to the mouse to the center, hold down the option key, click and drag. So we don't need to hold down the shift key. It's great to hold down the shift key because it allows us to be a bit more sloppy with the mouse. With the shift key, I can't really deviate from that vertical path once I've started to move it. The Smart Guides does help me. As long as I'm keeping my mouse relatively close to the aligned axis, then it will go straight up. But I like to hold down the Shift key just to be on the safe side. So we're just going to move this guy up to roughly where we think the center of that circle should be and let go. Okay, we've duplicated the first shape. Now I'm going to get that Everything tool, the uh, free transform tool, bring it up, and I'm going to scale this down. So I want to make sure that we're scaling it down all sides and we're scaling it down equally. So once again, we're holding down the Option key and the Shift key as we grab from the center. The Option key allows me to scale from the center. Here I've let go of the Option key and you can see the center point is moving and so my circle would no longer have alignment. So we keep that Option key held down. The Shift key is used to make sure I keep a perfect circle. So it's Option and Shift and then I scale that bad boy down to about where I think it ought to go. Okay, so there it is. Now we can just swap out of that tool by pressing the V key again. The V key gives us our black arrow tool, our selection tool, and that takes us right back, hides the bounding box, and away we go. So we're almost ready to make uh, duplicate the arm. We just gotta create that third point near the top, so we're just gonna hold, do this, re repeat the same process, hold down the option key, click, drag upward. At this point it's a good idea to hold down your shift key to make sure that we constrain to a vertical motion and then we let go. We let go of the mouse before we let go of the option and the shift key. Okay, so now we've got our second circle. E again. Option, shift from the corner. Drag it into a size that looks pretty reasonable and there it is. We've created the first arm. I'm just going to nudge a little bit. I want to create a sort of a vertical space between these three guys that's equal. This I'm talking about the gap between them. I want it to be visually uh, e equivalent. So I'm going to select my item and then I'm just going to use the arrow keys to nudge it down a little bit and get just a bit more visual precision. When you're creating logos, I can't emphasize this enough, you want to spend your time with little things like this. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to select both items. We're going to take this. We don't need to select the main circle. So we're just going to select this item and that item. 
with the shift key, still using the black arrow tool, and we're going to switch to the rotate tool. So you press R on your keyboard, that's this tool over here, allows us to rotate about any arbitrary axis that we want. And that axis, of course, is going to be the center of this circle. So I'm going to move my cursor, I'm not going to do anything until my cursor it highlights the center and actually says center there. That's smart, guys, it's letting us know that our mouse is right over top of the center of that circle. And now I'm going to hold down the option key. Now the option key here, when you have the rotate tool selected, the option key tells you to bring up the dialog box. So we hold down the option key and click on that center point, and that brings up the rotate dialog box that you can see right here. I'm going to turn preview on to make sure I can see what that rotation is going to be. 45 degrees is the right angle for the uh, rotation that we're looking for here. And then I'm just going to hit copy. That leaves a copy behind and makes the new copy at that 45 degree rotation. And you can see it rotated about that particular center point in the middle of my circle. So that was going to guarantee that when I rotate, continue rotating, these guys are going to all remain equidistant from that center of that big circle. So now that I've got a transformation in Illustrator's memory, it's going to remember the very last transformation that I did. That transformation in this case is the rotation that we just applied. So pressing Control D or Command D on the Mac repeats the last transformation. And because the last transformation was a copy, it's also going to remember to leave a copy behind. So Control D or Command D, and we just do that six more times, and boom, we've got our logo done. At this point, if you wanted to save and this were our final logo, all we'd do is we'd go to our tracing layer and drag that down to the trash icon at the bottom of the layers palette. Giddy up. Gone. So close this guy up, and we're done.